The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 18th, the 17th, 18th, that is the August 17th edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send that to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tigers did Well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started. A wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. The Dow's off 221 points, about 7 tenths of a percent. S&P about 9 tenths or 41 points. NASDAQ 101.5 percent, 209 points there. The Russell's off 1 and 8 tenths or 36 points. The semi's down 3.5 percent, 106 there. Tranny's off 2 percent, 296 points to the downside. Gold's trading off $11.60. 1777 is the print there. Silver's off 38 cents, 1970. Lights we crude up 93 pennies, 87.09. Is the uh, print natural gas down six pennies at 925 and the 30 year treasury printing out at 14006? That is off one point and one tick. Lead the charge dollar wise, the upside. It's a fan favorite inside the Tigers. Den. That's Cassava Sciences. S A V A is the ticker symbol. That's up eight dollars and 57 cents or 42 percent. Eli Lilly is up uh, to about three percent, eight dollars and 60 cents. Argenix is up 850, a little over two percent. Northrop Grumman. Uh, nearly two percent or nine bucks. Agilent Technologies up about seven fifty, about six percent to the upside. Lead the charge dollar wise to the downside. You got Mercado Libre off fifty bucks. That's a stinger, nearly five percent. BlackRock down twenty bucks, two and a half percent. Micro Strategy off twenty bucks, six percent. Lamb Research down three and a half percent or nineteen bucks. Broadcom down eighteen. That's three percent to the downside. So we've got some movers and we've got some shakers. So where are we going to begin? Let's go begin by taking a look at those daily equity future contracts out here. We'll check our screens we'll take a look at the uh, white background the ninja trader uh, screens out here and what we will see is that the NQ is testing support the NQ is where I should be where support Stevie well it happens to be the top of its daily profile as well as green oscillator unchanged line the exact numbers for you the uh, green oscillator and change line is printing right now at 13 435 and the top of that profile is 13 419 so I'd be watching that 13419 level. Price closes below that. Well, then we've got a uh, then we've got a move. Now it doesn't show on the white background chart. So I did show that to you earlier on my uh, black background charts where I've got that advanced Doppler tool that helps me identify new profiles as they are attempting to form. So if price is able to close below the green oscillator and change line, but I'll still use the because I won't get the profile confirmed until this evening. But I would say that if we do get a close below the bottom of the current uh, profile that you see on my screen out there, again, that level was at uh, 13,419. Uh, then what we'd be looking at likely is move back to 13,041. Now, you don't see that here. The 13,041 level is the bottom of the new profile that is attempting to form. So the NQ, now price is back at support. We can see this green oscillator and change line by day's end has held as a, uh, as a uh, springboard, if you will. 
or just a key level of support. So, um, you know, those of you that were short the NQ, who may have closed out that short, good uh, idea, because we don't know how this battle is going to unfold, and we can see on a daily basis prices really sitting at some key support areas. Back over to the ES Mini, the left-hand side, uh, there is an A to B equals CD pattern. There's A to B equals CD patterns for each of these equity future contracts. If, in fact, the uh, bear sash candle or bearish engulfing candle that is present right now forms, that's going to suggest a move lower. That that move lower would suggest uh, 42.28 or so. That's the green oscillator and change line. Now, the ES Mini is also attempting to make a new profile. I'll change over to that screen here momentarily. The top of which, or resistance, is at 43.2750. The center is at 42.63. We're at 42.68 right now. So you want to watch that 42.63 level. Why? Because it's a bearish structured profile. Typically, if we close below a bearish structured profile, that signals a move to the downside. Well, if we get a confirmed sell the D point, that would really all be in line. Now, it's 41.77. That's the current profile reading. 42.28. Eight, that is the green oscillator and change line. So that would really become the target area. If we take a look at the Dow, the Dow could, if it forms a bearish reversal candle today, confirm a sell the D point pattern. Now, there is no new profile at the moment for the Dow equity future contract. So its price target is very clear. That would be that green oscillator and change on at 33,440. Now, none of that's going to take place, likely, unless the NQ begins to fail here. In the case of the Russell 2000, it too is attempting to form a new profile. Now, support here is at 1968. 1976 is the uh, green oscillator and change line uh, and that would form a uh, sell the D point uh, pattern. Right now that should be pretty easy to do uh, because of yesterday's uh, narrow body candle out there but you'll want to watch that 1976 area for the Russell 2000. If we get it close below that, well 1968 should be the area where we would find support. So I'll switch back to our four panel charts here that shows you those new profiles. That way you can copy these or grab them, whatever it is that you're going to do, or just simply write them down on your pad of paper out there. So you'll see, you'll see the new potential. Again, new potential profile. You can't get this confirmed until, to, well, tonight at 6.01, but we won't be hosting a show at that time. So it will be tomorrow at uh, 11 o'clock that we understand whether these profiles took hold or not. Again, those new profiles being in the ES, the NQ, and the uh, Russell 2000. So where do we go from here? Well, I'll tell you where we go from here. We go stay with the NQ for the moment. And to stay with the NQ, we want to go understand because price is sitting near a level of support. Um, we're going to switch back to the uh, white background screens out here. What's going on on the intraday time periods? Oftentimes, if we are at a real key level of support, we will see some intraday bottoming signals. Well, the first one that pops up on your screen is the lower left-hand corner, and that is a 60-minute time frame chart for the NQ. It will complete a TD9 count bottom as we come into the noon hour. You already have bar number nine that's completed, so this is the bar following bar number nine. Maybe it makes a lower low. doesn't matter whether it does. But it Well, it matters if it does because that would create your benchmark level. If price were to close below the low of this pattern, then that tells you about a further move lower. Now, where would that further move lower take us inside a 60 minute time frame chart excellent question that next downside target if the td9 count does not take hold is 13,356 do i have any other bottoming signals well we don't as we speak so it's all going to be about that 60 minute time frame out here coinciding with the uh, daily time frame getting back to the support level so you want to keep an eye now if this td9 count does take hold what we should see is a price bounce up to its oscillator and chain zone, which is acted as resistance. That currently is printed at 13.542. If price does rally from here, that line will likely move up to 13.558, the 13.577 area. See Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, folks, so we've got the uh, we got the charts up here for Light Sweet Crude on our uh, screen. This is for Coda inside the uh, Tiger's Den. I believe Coda is short uh, Light Sweet Crude. So let's go take a look at the charts out here. What do we have? We got the uh, start with the monthly time frame chart. We have the continuous contract up. What we do know about the monthly time frame chart is the uh, momentum has shifted uh, from being bullish to uh, neutral to to uh, suggesting some downside action. So a level of support here, price below that green oscillator and change line. Uh, price should target 82.85. 82.85 is the bottom of the monthly profile. On a weekly basis, bar number nine is going to complete as long as price closes below. This is at Friday. As long as price closes below 92.85. In odds favor that that is likely to happen, but it's only Wednesday. So, go to close below 92.85. You've got a TD nine count bottom. That suggests that a bottom. From a intermediate term time frame should form either this week or next. Remember, you can't get the lower low on that bar following bar number nine out there. If we take a look at the daily time frame, the daily time frame shows that price is below the bottom of its profile and rejected its oscillator and change line. So let's just simply expand out the chart, make it a little bit easier for people to actually see, pull this back out here. And so we can see that oscillator and change line here, a key level for you to be watching to the upside would be 87.99 at the uh, moment. The price is below that and the uh, bottom of its daily profile. So the suggestion here is a, a move back to its next breakout level at 81.88 out there. <clears throat> Again, watch, uh, watch the 82.85 level, though. That is the bottom of the monthly profile. As we take a look at the intraday charts out here, what you got was on a 30-minute time frame, a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. You've got that on a 60-minute chart. You have that on the 120-minute time frame chart. Nothing on the 240. Nothing that sticks out to me on the... Um, five-hour time frame chart. So back to the 30-minute chart out here with regard to light sweet crude. So you've got that nice bottom. Price is holding the oscillator and change line and the top of its profile. As long as those areas hold, those areas would be basically I'd be looking at 86.69. If price holds that here, uh, then that's going to suggest that it wants to make a move up to 89.70. If price does not hold this level, then a retest of support, which would be 85.83 to 85.98. Now this is a 30-minute chart out here. So what you want to be paying attention to is where's that close in 10 minutes at 1130. 
back to the hourly chart now. On the hourly chart, nice road momentum indicator bottom. Price did close above the top of that profile, but it's back below that area right now. Support here because that's a bullish structured profile. Uh, Coda would be in the uh, 86.31-ish area. So watch to see if that level gets tested and whether it gets rejected. If it doesn't get rejected, 85.84 will get hit. On the two-hour time frame chart, price is just consolidating with inside its profile. So the key level to be watching to the upside there is 87.25. You really don't want to see a close above that. If you get that, that's going to suggest a revisit of the prior highs out here. That would take you into the about the $90 area. So that's what's going on with Lightspeed Crew, and I hope that helps you out, uh, Coda. Let's go take a look at your next request. Your next request was to take a look at natural gas. So let's pull up those charts out here. In case of natural gas, the real resistance level is from the uh, month of uh, June. June created that confirmed roads momentum indicator top. It did it with a bearish engulfing candle. And that says $9.60. 9.604 is your real key level of resistance to watch. If price able to close above that, it says we move to the upside. Now, that was a continuous contract. We probably get a different number. And this is the number that I would be using uh, because we have the October contract up here. And on a weekly basis, the resistance level is $9.56. Let me make sure I've got that correct out here. So I do want to give you the accurate number. Uh, and the contract that you are trading. So it's going to be that high. And again, that high is $9, 9.568. If price takes that out, then it's a moonshot to the upside. Otherwise, resistance is held. Do you sell uh, natural gas? No, you just, you're up at resistance out here. Uh, the monthly chart is neutral to bullish. The weekly chart is neutral to bullish. The daily chart is neutral to bullish. You can see it's also taking on its most recent high out here. Uh, so again, that's just simply going to confirm the number that we were looking at. That was from the trading day specifically of June the 8th out there. And again, that's $9, 9 9.568. You close above that and it should be off to the races to the upside. Now, when we look at the intraday charts out here, Coda, you can see a nice road momentum indicator top on the 30, on the 60, on the 120. No topping pattern that sticks out to I take that back. There's a TD9 count top on the 240. There's a TD9 count top on the uh, five hour time frame chart. So, intraday charts out here, as price got back to that level of resistance, that old high, you can see how those intraday charts were giving you a signal that it wasn't ready to take it out. Now, what has not occurred out here is uh, any key levels of support have really not been broken. For the 30 minute time frame chart, the level you'd be looking at is $9.12. For the 60 minute time frame, it's $9.12. So close below 9.12 is then gonna bring the 879 to 889 area into play. The 120 minute chart is testing support right now. That's the bottom of its current profile. Uh, the 240 really doing the same. In the case of the five hour chart, it doesn't have any support. If it closes below the five hour time frame chart, it could open up the Kimona for $8.65. But really we'd go back to those other shorter term time frames to take step, uh, take uh, uh, our interpretation one step at a time. So Coda, uh, you've got price and resistance inside of natural gas pulling back. It may just simply be pulling back to support to reload to uh, take another chance at taking out that resistance level. So I hope that helped you out with regard to natural gas and lights recruit. Thanks so much for the requests. The next request coming in from uh, Kumis. This is by email. He wants to take a look at CRM. So let's get back to my multi time frame charts. We'll put those up on the screen here, screen here momentarily and actually read Kumis's question, which is, can you please review and talk a little bit about ticker symbol CRM? Thank you for everything that you do. Cause, cause, cause. So let's go take a look at CRM. What do we know? What we know is on a monthly time frame, price is consolidated with inside its profile. Your support level 166.79. Resistance between 219 and 227. The weekly chart, nice road momentum indicator bottom is taking price right up to resistance. Resistance being the top of its profile. That's level free to watch if you are long, well, whether you're long or short out there. The top of that profile is 191.81. You close above that, it suggests a further rally. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart here for uh, Salesforce, uh, what do we have? Well, at the bottom was a road momentum indicator bottom. Price now has resistance that is TD9 count breakdown area, and that's at a price point of 196.45. So we won't look at the intraday charts here right now. Let's just come back and revisit monthly, weekly, daily. What do we have out here? Well, you have a clear bottom on the weekly and the daily time frame with price dealing with resistance areas. Even though the weekly says 191.81, I'd use the 196.45 level as the uh, last point of resistance out here on a further move higher. Now, if you get above that, that's going to signal move back to the 219 to 227 level. As I take a look at the intraday charts out here, 
to see if there's anything that is of really help to us. And 15-minute chart, price is pulled back. It's uh, trying to form a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern right now. So, um, yeah, nothing, nothing really that I see other than that uh, cause. So I do hope that that helps you out, and thanks so much for the request out there. Um, real quickly here, let's go for our dinners out here. Let's go change over to Saba. This is one that's uh, followed uh, primarily by uh, Dan is the one that's brought it to the attention of everybody here. And Saba having a beautiful day. Saba is up uh, about, um, where is it? It's up uh, 38%. Seven dollars and sixty cents. Now, what what Saba has done? It's right into resistance, thirty oh eight. That's the level. Now it's big volume in here, so it should be able to take that out. It hasn't. It's natural resistance, the TD nine count breakdown level. But you close above that, and Saba should be off to the races. Price is trading above the top of its weekly profile out there. That suggests, and you got a nice TD nine count on the monthly. So thirty nine thirty six. If you can get above thirty oh eight, Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. Let's go to our uh, next request out here. We've got about uh, three in the uh, looks like four now in the uh, in the queue out there. So we didn't take a look at gold. We'll do that uh, for you, uh, John, as uh, well. So uh, let's go to our next request, which is from Fletch inside the Tigers. In Fletch wants to take a look at the XLE. He's looking for, I believe, a long. He is long or is looking for a, let's see here. Can you look at XLE to the long side? Sure. So we know about the XLE right now. Is that it has an A to B equals CD pattern out here. It also has a TD9 count top. And, that, and this is the daily time frame. That's really the, the area that price needs to close above 
and that is from the candle session of July 29th, Fletch. That high out there is a 78.66. So if, in fact, price can clear that level, then it should complete the one-to-one, -one, at least the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. That would take us up into the $84 area. The other area where price is struggling with inside the XLE is the top of its daily profile. That's at 77.87. So we've got sellers at the top of that TD9 count pattern. We've got sellers at the top of the profile. You can see the oscillator and change line has changed color. If price can test and reject that level, that would be a bullish outcome. But we still have the consolidation with inside the daily time frame. If we look at the weekly chart, we can see that it's oscillator and change line. This has a confirmed roach momentum indicator bottom when price had gapped down. But its resistance level is at the top of its profile and its green oscillator and change on. That's at 79.40. So close above 79.40 would say we're on our merry way to the upside. If we look at the monthly time frame chart, TD9 count top. That took price right back to support, which held. That was a green oscillator and change line. So for the monthly time frame, the XLE remains bullish. For the weekly time frame, it's pretty much neutral. For the daily time frame, I would say it is a neutral as well, neutral and consolidated. It's certainly not bearish as we speak. So, Fletch, I hope that helps you out with regard to the XLE and what it is uh, doing out here. The next request, <coughs> excuse me, came in from Portugal, from M Squared out there. And uh, what uh, Mike wanted us to take a look at was the NDX priced in multiple currencies. Many of you are familiar. We'll go switch back first to my black background charts out here. And so many of you, or hopefully all of you, or each of you are familiar with, uh, with, the, with, with the set of tools that we use to help us understand what the markets are communicating to us. For example, here is the Dow chart. I have shared this with each of you um, certainly over the past couple of days as the Dow priced in these other currencies, the other primary currencies, that is, euros, yen, and pounds is at new all-time highs. New all-time high yesterday, priced in euros. New all-time high today, priced in yen. New all-time high yesterday in pounds, uh, priced in pounds. This is the dollar that we're taking a look at. Nowhere near that in the case of U.S. dollars. Now, I have maintained that when you get major tops out there, you will see these, you will see these charts top at or about the same time. At or about the same time. Since we now have new all-time highs in pounds and yen and euros, this tells us about in the future. This tells us that we should see the Dow make new all-time highs in dollars as well. It'll be in these other currencies. And I'm not saying that we're not going to see some type of decline or significant decline out there. This is giving us a roadmap to what to anticipate into the future. Now, Mike's question was, and it was a great question, I appreciate the uh, request out there, was, was well, how is the uh, NASDAQ 100 performing in those major currencies. So I went ahead, put that chart together here just before we went on the air. And as we take a look at it, first you'll see that the NDX 100, whether it's priced in US dollars, euros, that would be the second chart. Yen is the next chart. I didn't put that in, and the chart on the very right is a great British pound. Each of those have a top of when? The exact same day, 11-22-21. So this here, again, when we get major tops out there, and that was a fairly major top inside the NDX 100, absolutely. And we saw, you know, really nice decline out there. So this is how it works. So now that we know that the Dow, so in the NDX 100, nowhere near as a performance level as the uh, Dow out there, which I think, what Mike, was your question out here. Uh, not to be, uh, not, not really a surprise to any of us. Why? Because when we take a look at international markets, that is really, and that's a global flow of capital, that is really about liquidity. And that liquidity, you're not going to get better liquidity than inside of the Dow. I know a lot of people hate the Dow. It's only 30 stocks or what have you. But we want to understand what large money international traders are taking a look at. And it'd be no surprise, it should be no surprise to any of us if the NQ holds that support level. Uh, even though this is a this is the, the, the stock, uh, the NDX 100 version of the NQ out there, uh, we shouldn't be surprised because when we take a look at traders of the Dow, okay, of the markets in uh, major currencies out here, it's in breakout mode. They're not seeing anything bearish out here. And there's a lot of traders that are trading the Dow priced in euros, priced in pounds, and priced in yen out there. So uh, so that's what's going on, uh, Mike. No, the NDX 100 is not making new all-time highs, but, uh, it, but I believe that it will. No, the NDX 100 is not. And that just feeds into, uh, you know, if you if you listen to the uh, segment that I did with Tom on uh, Monday out there, um, you know, what I was basically saying was was offering caution 
over the next uh, couple of uh, weeks out or two or three weeks. So, um, and, 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 and really that chart, so I, would, I do appreciate you requesting it, is also suggesting caution out there. All right, so let's go to our next request. I took care of Mike in uh, Portugal. Let's go to uh, Ray, uh, who wants to take a look at, Billy just came in by email. Let me try to pull that up here. And Ray wants to take a look at ticker symbol VERU. How much higher can VERU run until it hits resistance? and has a uh, pullback here. So I think we're in the black, yeah, we are. Let me just go over to our three time frame charts out here. Whoops, that's not the one I wanted. I wanted this tab. Let's type in B-E-R-U. So let's go see what, uh, try, see if the profile levels answer Ray's question. And the answer to that is no, they do not. Prices above all profile levels, daily, weekly, and monthly. Uh, the uh, target here, let's pull this back, is the uh, monthly chart. So your question was, how high can it go before it has a pullback? And the answer, my friend, is going to be $24.57. The actual high so far this month, $24.55. Boy, you got to love that. So $24.57 is the high from February of 2021. Now, the volume there was 167 million shares. You're pushing into it already with 160, basically 167 million shares out there. So if it can close above that level, that's going to suggest a further move higher. Now, the question might be further move higher to where? And that's a great question. So I think to answer that question, we'll just simply take the weekly chart, expand it out, and type in an A to B equals CD pattern. So the A to B equals CD pattern uh, that I would use is going to use as a low April 4th. It's going to use as the high uh, April 11th. It's going to use as the C point, the low from uh, May the 9th out there. You know, that's not really a great A to B equals CD pattern either. But it does say that the next price projection level would take you up to the 2809. But to answer your question, it's really going to be that high of uh, 2457 that you're going to have to uh, watch. Now, if we get some type of uh, pullback out there, Ray, what we should look at, give me a call. We'll put up the multi time frame charts. We'll see what's going on on the intraday basis as well as the uh, daily time frame. Uh, but right now, price is pushing into a swing point that could say you're in total breakout mode with VERU out there uh, because it is certainly pushing higher with volume. The next question that came in from uh, John inside the Tiger's Den. John wanted to take a look at uh, Goldilocks. So, to do that, uh, it'll take a moment here for these charts to populate, and that's okay because we're about to go to a break. So we get back here. We're going to take a look at uh, gold for John inside the Tiger's Den. And, of course, folks, I would love to hear from you. I don't think I have anything else uh, on deck out there. No, I do not. But I do see a couple of messages inside the Tiger's Den. So we're going to take a look at Goldilocks as soon as we get back. think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. So real quickly here, we'll take a look at the uh, – I didn't get a chance to really decorate the chart, so to speak. But this is the uh, S&P 500 uh, priced in uh, euros. That's panel number two. Panel number three is yen. The panel on the very right is uh, pounds. You can see that uh, we're up towards its all-time highs uh, priced in those currencies. Looks like inside the yen right now. It is, well, it's still trying to take out that level, has not done that. So that was for uh, Coda inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And uh, John wants to take a look at the Dow, priced in a Chinese yuan. Uh, I'll get that uh, chart uh, set up for us, and we'll be able to take a look at that uh, tomorrow out there. So we'll add that uh, currency pair somehow to, um, or some, some type of uh, set of charts out there. Um, so that'll take care of those two requests. So now let's go back to uh, Goldilocks. We'll switch over to our white uh, background charts out here, take a look at those multi time frames, see what they're signaling to you and I. Now we already know that gold is testing the uh, bottom of its daily profile. Uh, the bottom of its daily profile is 1776.50. If price uh, closes below 1776.50, that's going to suggest lower price, lower price to where? Well, I come back to the weekly time frame chart, and uh, that would signal to us, John, about 1757 or 1716 out there. If we take a look at uh, gold price, uh, or oh, gold price, if we take a look at gold on a 30 minute time frame chart, needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom, Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom. You're in bar number nine on a 60 minute time frame chart. So that says that we could see a bottom, a TD9 count bottom, between noon and 1 p.m. Whatever the low is between noon and 1 p.m. out there, if that low gets taken out, that tells you about a strong momentum move to the downside out there. Oh, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what that would signal to us. Two-hour time frame chart, uh, John, I don't have any kind of bottom signal, nor do I on the 240, nor do I on the uh, five-hour time frame chart. They're suggesting uh, price pulls back to the 1770, 1768-ish area out here. Um, so that's what I see with regard to Goldilocks. Again, the key area truly being the bottom of its uh, daily profile. Um, so 1770, oh, hold on, let me make sure. Uh, that is, uh, again, that level is uh, 1775.50. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request. Next request coming in from McGuppy inside the Tiger's Den. Why don't you take a look at ticker symbol XBI. So let's get back to our three panel charts out there. Let's get that in our system, XBI. It'll take just a moment here to populate because of everything that I've got open at the uh, moment. So we'll let that populate here, and then we'll uh, tell you exactly what it is uh, doing. Um, the request uh, from Matt Guppy was, could you please cover XBI? It's been consolidating in recent highs, but today appears to be trying to break down. Where do you see support, oscillator and change line, and the uh, profile levels out there? Okay, so great question. XBI uh, is what we've got up on our screen here, and we can see 
truly it has uh, pulled back. It is trading below its green oscillator and change line. So the suggestion there is that uh, price may pull back. So the top of its profile, let me see, let me just kind of confirm this. The top of the profile is 83.63. So that is likely where price would head to on a uh, further uh, pullback here. Uh, from a pattern standpoint, I really don't have an A to B equals C. You can see the A to B level out here. It's a gigantic level. So I know that that hasn't, uh, that, that that pattern has not completed. But where price did stop was at its TD9 count breakdown level at 94.19. When price gets back to a support area, like a TD9 support area, that can be a bottom. When you get up to a resistance level, such as that TD9 count breakdown area, that can be a top in lieu of any other pattern out here. It looks like that's what we might have. If we look at the weekly time frame, you could get a confirmed TD9 count top this week. So long as price closes, but we're 89.40 right now, and so long as price closes on Friday, above 80.68. If price does that, then you're going to have a weekly TD9 count top. McGuppy, that would then suggest a pull back to the 86.41 or 76.70 level. If we look at the monthly time frame chart out here, there is a completed by the D point pattern. So the A to B will see D, very easy to see. You can see a couple months ago was that bull sash candle. Price should target 96.71 or so. That's the oscillator and change line. So far, the monthly high has been 95.18. Is that close enough? It's pretty close, but not close enough out here. But I, I agree with you. Your interpretation absolutely correct. From a volume standpoint today, price so far in the first couple hours of trading has pulled back with 4.5 million shares. What it's going into is a trading day from August 5th that had about 20 million shares. So you got four and two and four times. Uh, that's really light volume that it's pulling back. Doesn't matter whether it's light or not. The next low of support, which is what you would ask for, is really going to be down what appears to be at 86.41. Below that, it would then be 83.63. So hope that helps you out uh, with regard to what the XBI is uh, doing out there. Um, you see if there's some other question inside the Tiger's Den. Can we take a look at the SQQQ? We cannot. We cannot take a look at the SQQQ. Of course we can. But what you really want to do is take a look at what's going on inside the queues out there. But I'll put up the triple for you, and we'll do that on the black background screens out there. And then what we'll do is we'll take a look at the end queues and just get a, uh, a little bit of an update. So we take a look at SQQQ. That is the triple uh, being short the uh, NDX100 out there. So we've got a new profile that is formed. If we were just going to use these profiles to interpret what the market is telling us, it's a bullish structured profile. Remember uh, when I mentioned that the daily profile for the NQ is trying to form a bearish structured daily profile. Now that profile that we looked at, we'll look at again out there, will not be confirmed until 6.01 this evening. But if it does take hold, and in this case here, this one is real uh, with regard to the new profile. So this much in the SQQ I can share with you that this is not using my advanced Doppler tool to figure this one out. And that says that price should make a move up to 37 bucks. That's where price should find resistance. That's on the SQQQ. Now, let's go pull back and take a look at the uh, at the NQ charts out there. So we'll do this here real quickly, because we've covered this uh, before, but that's okay. And uh, is really taking a look at the uh, daily time frame. And price right now is sitting at support. And support is that green oscillator and change line. I'll just simply expand out the chart here. You can see that each time that we have been down to this oscillator and change line by day's end, it has held. And that is a bullish signal. It's an especially bullish signal when you have a green oscillator and change line. So price right now is trading just below that. By the way, below that means... 13,432 is the oscillator and change line, but the top of its profile, 13,419. Now, that's the old profile out there, but if price holds that, then it remains, remains for the most part bullish. I say remains for the most part bullish because what I don't know is whether or not the new profile is going to hold. So we're going to switch back to those black background charts out there. We'll go take a look at that because here you'll be able to see that profile level. You'll be able to see the new ones, again, that have formed for the ES or are attempting to form. It's what I should say for the ES, the NQ, and the, uh, well, the Dow now has one. And the Russell 2000, remember the Dow did not have a new profile. Now, again, this one is also attempting to form. But back to the NQ. You can see that the NQ's profile, if it does take hold, even if the old one holds, 
because price is below the center of that new profile, 13507, if it does take hold, that's really suggesting that price should make its way down to the 13041 level. But we're really going to have to come back to this GT tomorrow because I just don't know whether this profile is going to hold or not. But if we take a look at now the Dow, just a new piece of information out there. The Dow right now has a bearish engulfing candle. I do not know what it will look like at day's end. That's the bottom left-hand panel. But if we do get that, by the way, uh, the top of that profile is 34087, and the bottom and center are in the same location. That tells you about strong support at 32820. That's for the Dow Equity Future Contract. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be back in just a few to close out the show. Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. The uh, chart we have up on the screen here is uh, ticker symbol LIT. That is the uh, Global Lithium and Battery Technology ETF out here. It has a confirmed daily A to B equals CD to the upside with a price projection of 84.28. But it's run into a little bit of resistance. Brand new profile that is uh, formed today, 82.17. Coda is where the sellers are hanging out. The buyers are hanging out at 78.90. May just be consolidation within that as it resumes its way to the upside out there. Weekly time frame price is above the top of its uh, profile. With inside the monthly time frame price is consolidating with inside that. As we switch over real quickly and take a look at my uh, other multi time frame charts out here, what we'll see is that the next upside price target. So we've got the 82.17 area that price has to take out. 82.66 
is the oscillator and change line on the monthly time frame. So that's where your battle's at. You know, you're going to watch 78.90. You're going to watch 79.10 as uh, those levels. If those areas hold, then it remains bullish and price should continue on and make that 84.28. But, of course, 82.66 is going to be a key resistance level. So I'll leave you with this. The charts to be watching for the rest of the day out there, certainly for the next couple of hours, those are going to come from the 60-minute time frame. So let's get those charts up on the uh, screen here. They'll be up here momentarily. Each of them, as you will see have TD nine count bottom patterns. Now, in the case of the ES mini, it's the bar following bar number nine that is completing right now. I don't know. Well, it's it's five min more minutes. So likely the low is in out there and you're going to watch 42.55. If there's a close below 42.55 on any hourly bar, that says this pattern gets negated and 42.21 becomes the target. Bar following bar number nine on the NQ. Right now, the low is at uh, 13,406 and a quarter. So I'll assume that that low is going to hold. And therefore, if you see a close below that in the next hour or two, that suggests you move back to 13,356. The same thing inside the Dow. Right now, that low, bar following bar number nine, is 33,804. That's the level to be watching. Inside of the uh, Russell 2000, the area to be watching is uh, 1976.50. Now, what price should do here is price should at least bounce up to those oscillator unchanged line levels out there. So to the extent you're uh, going ahead and trading intraday, I'd take a snapshot of these charts out here because they should help you guide yourself into what the markets or the equity markets are doing. Folks, stay tuned for some great programming. I'll be back with you tomorrow, 11 o'clock sharp. Thanks so much for joining us on wonderful Wednesday. Have a great afternoon.